Hi Ryan and welcome Hi. to Machina. Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> now um, I'm really interested in seeing what you've got here. We've already seen a little video of this, mm -hmm. uh, which is this really interesting design of yours, which you've got attached to a guitar. Mm -hmm. What is this? Tell us a bit, a little bit more about it. Um, so basically, it's a it's a hexaphonic photonic pickup. Um, so it uses. Um, some lasers and photodiodes below the light um, to do some really funky stuff. <laughs> uh, but basically, it's a guitar pickup. First things first. And then um, there are a bunch of different ways we can manipulate um, the sound. Uh, so, just I've just got to stop you there, because this is a light sensor yeah. pickup. So what, why have you gone for this as opposed to just like a normal pickup? What sort of advantages or does this open up for us? Well, there's like so many ways you can manipulate the sound that wasn't, isn't possible without using sound. So like for some simple examples, uh, you can just, um, if you want a vibrato, you can literally just move the lasers around and it will create a vibrato so if I do that. Oh, you can actually... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's cool, so you can kind of interact with it. Yeah, you can literally move the lasers around. That's fantastic. So will this work on other instruments as well? Or is yeah, it yeah, it would work on any string instrument. So one of the reasons I wanted to make a light pickup is that um, it works with nylon strings, because mm -hmm. I usually work with classical guitars, and um, a magnetic pickup wouldn't work with nylon strings. Yeah, and another thing I wanted to do was um, have it be hexaphonic, so because it's... Um, so what's hex... So you're going to have to tell me oh. what is hexaphonic. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. <laughs> um, it just means there's like one channel per string, so oh. uh, you can see... I have it plugged into like FL Studio here, okay. and every string has its own channel. Oh, yeah. So what we're seeing there—that's per string. So you, mm -hmm. I guess you could treat them and put like a reverb on one string yeah. and delay on another string. Yeah, exactly. I've always wanted to do something like that, um, but existing hexaphonic setups were just like I couldn't afford them, so I just made my own. <laughs> um, yeah. As you do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and like uh, some of the other effects you can play with is like fuzz. So because you can kind of think of each photodiode as a window that can see a certain amount of light, if you bring it upwards, the string kind of vibrates further than the window. So you get like this fuzz or this clipping. Um, and you can adjust how much fuzz you want from around, by bringing it up and down the strings. Um, stuff like that. And, and one of the more crazy features is like, what I call like emergent chaos, which is <laughs> these knobs which I call curse, and this knob which I call um, the emergent element. I mean, one of them's. <laughs> <laughs> I might have switched them around, <laughs> but like, um, I have this AM synthesis algorithm in here okay. that basically makes the lasers flicker at audio rates. So you get like this amplitude modulation thing going on. You can get these interesting metallic and bit crushy sounds. Wicked. Yeah. Uh, should I play? With yeah. Can we hear that? Yeah. Um, You can actually pick it up and play it if you want. Yeah, sure. Mm, what should I play? Mm. 
so um, this kind of changes the frequency. So I, and this changes the dimness, I think. Okay. So um, you can kind of see the lasers react to the peak. If I, if I put that all the way there, when I pluck it, you can see the lasers oh, yeah. kind of dim because the, there's like a feedback algorithm um, that Fantastic. makes it kick in, yeah. This is really, really cool. Thank um, you. Yeah, and you know, when's this, is it, I, it, it doesn't look quite finished. I guess you're still working yeah, on it then, are I you? Yeah, I am still working on it. So when can we expect this maybe to be out? Um, hopefully next year. I, there's not that much left to do. Okay. Um, I kind of messed up this output here because I wanted it to be standalone, but for now you have yeah. to use um, the USB output. I'm figuring that out. And, and any idea kind of how much it might cost when it comes to market? Um, may, like this is just a random number, but like maybe like 500? Is that euros, dollars? Like, 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 yeah, like dollars. Okay. <laughs> um, um, but yeah, I don't really know yet. Okay. I haven't crunched the numbers. Great. Well, I guess people can head over to your Instagram or your website and keep an eye yeah. on this for now. Mm -hmm. And uh, I will just very, very quickly ask, because you said yeah. that you've also been working on something else here. Yeah, this one's actually almost three years old now, but I am working on this new version of it um, that's much less janky. <laughs> Janky, okay. Um, and it's got like a compact key set um, with the combinations. And anyway, so yeah, I can this? show you this. <laughs> um, it's like a uh, MIDI Omnichord style guitar. Okay. Um, the idea was like I didn't want to spend all my time practicing chords and like scales on like a piano or a guitar. So. I just made this. <laughs> As you do, again. Um, <laughs> yeah, so this this kind of changes the chord, and you can spin this. Yeah. And it plays the chord. So right. I think this is a C, um, and you can also strum it. Um, And what these do, these buttons, um, they change the to tonality of the chord. So this is the minor button. If I press hold that and strum it, you get a minor. This is like a flat seven, dominant seventh. So that's like a dominant seventh chord. Right. Yeah. So yeah, it works on those kind of principles of uh, an omnichord where you've kind of got those yeah. predetermined chords there and you just strum away and yeah but it seems a little bit more interactive it looks like you yeah. can actually get a bit more nuance from it yeah i think on an omni chord you can only have like a major seventh and a minor and yeah um there's not much else but here you have like a, a literal multitude of chord combinations like you can do some really out there stuff yeah you can like get like a Lydian 11th with like a major 7th and a, um, what is this, a 9th, and even add in a 6th <laughs> if okay. you want. And we can just see how that sounds, I'll have no idea. But it will sound like that, and right. you can change the octave. No, so when's this coming out, do we know? Um. Honestly, this is like so much more simpler than like that yeah. um, pickup one. But I just need to make the body for this actually yeah. and design one. Um, I wanted to make it in time for Machina, but I just ran out of time. So um, that's cool. Yeah, um, but maybe maybe next year as well. I might actually finish them at the same time. Um, they're pretty much done. They just need like polishing. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, it's lovely to see, you Thank know, you. this sort of work in progress as much as it is when it's actually finished. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, thanks for demoing these for Thank us, you. and we'll certainly keep an eye out for when mm. they when they come to market. And yeah, I can't wait. Honestly, it's been like so fun. I don't believe yeah. I get to be here. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. Uh, yeah, welcome as well to your first machina. Yay.
Thank Thanks you. so much, Ryan. Keep up the great work. Thank you.